Since I'm talking to you through a video recording, it shouldn't come as a surprise to you that digitalization also has profound effect on education. We have used information and communication technologies actually for a long time to enhance education. In a project called, called Telesecundaria, which uh, was spearheaded by Mexico, uh, for example, television technology, uh, broadcast, the basic communication technology, has been used for many years to bring educational contents to rural areas where governments of these countries could not afford to have sufficient teachers. Over a million students in Mexico have received education like this. Students who otherwise could not have received this kind of education. Nowadays, we go beyond television and we use the internet, information and communication technology in their digital format, which leads to a lot of interactivity aspects that TV couldn't have. And a very important phenomena has emerged referred to as MOOCs, M-O-O-C, these have massive open online courses, courses that you can take, just go online, you can search on the internet for MOOCs, there are several platforms, and you can take courses for free, courses about the most diverse subjects, you often also get a certificate um, once you complete this course, and these courses and these certificates are started to be recognized also by employers. So very profound changes are going on in the educational sector. One of the benefits of digitalizing educational content is that digital products have infinite economies of scale. What does that mean? It means that uh, it may cost millions of dollars to create some very good online content, but once it is created, all you have to do is copy and paste, right mouse button, and then you can diffuse it to how many stakeholders you want. The same applies to educational content. So while I was at the United Nations Secretariat in Latin America, we were uh, helping to develop an initiative together with the Canadian governments to create a network of educational port portals throughout Latin America. Since most countries in Latin America speak the same language, Spanish, the idea was that some advanced countries like Chile and Argentina were developing a lot of useful online content. For example, a software program uh, for algebra or for the introduction of basic biology. Now, once the software program was developed, it was uploaded to this network called RELPE. And then other countries who were not as advanced and who wouldn't have the funds to develop such software could evaluate if they wanted to download it and integrate them in their national educational curricula. There was no additional cost involved for countries like Chile and Argentina. They would have done it anyways. But these kind of international cooperation projects take advantage of this digital particularity called infinite economies of scale. The fact that you can just copy and paste digital content without additional cost. Healthcare is another sector that can significantly benefit from digitalization. Healthcare expenditure in the United States, for example, is equivalent to about 20% of the gross domestic product. That means every fifth dollar spent in the United States goes into healthcare. Now, it is estimated that the use of digitalization can reduce healthcare costs by about a third, which is significantly. How? Well, for example, if you look at what are the main expenditures in the healthcare agenda, one big expenditure is that patients don't follow their prescriptions. That means they have prescriptions, don't follow through. You can think about yourself, how you could use digital technology in order to reduce this kind of cost. Another expenditure is that there are many unnecessary visits to the doctor through many websites nowadays, also approved websites, websites that are produced by medical professionals. Uh, many people can now get uh, advice online and they might not uh, go unnecessarily to the doctor anymore. A third agenda item is unhealthy diets, lack of exercise. You can think yourself again how you could use digital technologies to innovatively help to enable that. And another one is that uh, patients don't give doctors enough information. That is a significant spending item. Now, 
with digitalization, we can track actually our basic behavior and we have a register of our entire medical history. So doctors have now much more access and patients don't have to repeat the entire history every time they go to another uh, specialist. Last but not least, critical warning signs are often missed and digitalization helps us to detect them, not only through scanners and, and these kind of technologies, but for example, um, people have started to introduce a lot of sensors in their households. For example, people who have diseases like Parkinson, for example, can install themselves different kind of floor detectors. And you can just see on the way they walk on a given day if the illness, if the disease is accelerating or decelerating. So these kind of critical warning signs can allow us to see when which kind of intervention is necessary. But e-health is not only a necessity for highly developed countries like the United States, it is also a very useful tool for developing countries. Check out that video by Nathan Eagle. Digitalization also changes the way wars are being fought. To say it in the words of the United States National Security Agency, NSA, the next major conflict will start in cyberspace. To give you an idea about the strategies of cyber warfare, the NSA plans the cyber warfare strategy in different phases. The first basic phase is the surveillance of the internet. And you have surely heard some reports how extensively the NSA is surveilling the internet. The next step consists in detecting vulnerabilities in this network infrastructure. Vulnerability means there are some ways that one can intervene or take control of. They use what they call stealthy implants. These are little programs that are then strategically placed in order to uh, gain access to what they call critical infrastructure. So critical infrastructure are basically energy, communication, transportation networks, often of foreign countries. Uh, remember how wars basically work. So if one country attacks another country traditionally, one of the first things we try to do is to take out the critical infrastructure of this country. You try to bomb the roads, take out the airports, destroy the power plants, because once this is dysfunctional, the country actually doesn't work anymore. Now the idea is, can you take this critical infrastructure out without the need of all these bombs and boots on the ground? What if, if you could take out the critical infrastructure just by the push of a button? You would have very efficient ways of fighting wars Well, once you have the access over the network of the other country. So that's the idea behind that. And as a last point, uh, the NSA self-declared goal is to achieve global network dominance. <laughs> that's a very ambitious goal, but well, the one who has global network dominance is certainly a very significant strategic advantage once it comes down to war.